I used to smile, I used to dream I had high hopes about the man that I could be I fell in the river when I got pulled down But I keep my head up the second time around Cut, love it. A street cat named Bob was published in 2012. There have now been seven books in the series, and the book went on to become an international bestseller, selling five million copies worldwide. So it does have this extraordinary um, appeal and uh, a massive fan base. I mean, if you go to the book signings, it's quite surreal. Queues around the block. We're not just making the film for them, but we don't want to disappoint them. It was always a tricky adaptation in terms of how to deal with the story of James and Bob and also dealing with James's story, which is you know, recovery from addiction. I do hope the fans will really enjoy the, the, the balance we found in telling these, these two sides of the story. I think this story, the book James wrote, uh, the reason it's touched so many people, I think, is it's got, it's got such a purity to it, I think. It's pure and hopeful and, and beautiful in the way that, by James's act of kindness, spending his last 20 quid on, on getting medication for Bob and, and more than that, taking care of him and looking after him, they, they beautifully balance each other in their worlds and, and they're both, at that moment, very vulnerable and they sort of come together and they, uh, they help each other and, and there's you know, there's something so kind of positive and beautiful about that. Uh, excuse me, do you know whose cat this is? What did you do to it? Me, I didn't do anything. I just found him over there. He's bleeding. Don't just stand there. Betty is a, a firecracker who James meets and Betty comes into his life uh, with her own past that she's dealing with. She helps mend Bob and introduces a new side of life to James. She is the brightness in this world of darkness for him. She's a, a, an example of how you can go through grief and loss in your life and use it in a positive fashion. She's taken that loss and turned it into compassion. The Christmas scene is a beautiful scene between Betty, James and Bob because it's, it's a moment in their lives where they can um, feel joy and happiness and they've all come together and at a time when the rest of the world is celebrating with their families they've chosen to celebrate with themselves and they're having a, a happy Catmas instead of a Merry Christmas. This is a Christmas song for Betty and Bob. You need this in your life in your life today. James is a very talented busker and this is the first time that Betty hears him sing and, and she's truly drawn to him by it. He's a beautiful singer and he's got such a lightness in his voice and it's the first time she sees that and Bob just being in some sort of Christmas food coma on the sofa is just a really nice touch in the scene. Working with Ruta was, was lovely, um, yeah, she's brilliant. We had the first two weeks, basically, when we were just doing our scenes together. In the cold Christmas sequence, yeah, we get into a bit of a song at one point. I found the story really compelling, that uh, our involvement with an animal. We always think that they're just creatures that we feed and they look after and they love us and it's all very simple, but actually for many people it's much more than that. And the animal becomes a friend and becomes somebody with whom they communicate a lot and, and at a depth that we don't even completely understand. It's an amazing relationship and you can see that it is far beyond the usual and that both sides accept the other on a different kind of level, and an intuitive level. It's fascinating. The cat does things that no other cats would do. Go out in the middle of the traffic, ride on buses, ride on bikes, all sorts of things. And it does it, I think, just because it's with the right person. 
Roger's passion and love of creating moments between animals and human beings is so lovely to watch. He, he gets a, a real genuine thrill and excitement from it. I can see on his face. Can you me a high five? The real James is there and he's obviously lived through a lot of these moments. I've played real life people before but not when they're living and not when they're there on set and passing their own cap from his shoulders to mine before I take it. It's very sort of surreal. Some days though it's really strange yesterday being at the Big Issue office where he'd actually been and had this exact interaction. And action. You know they say weed is a gateway drug. Uh, yeah, I'm a little familiar with the concept. The Big Issue is the gateway opportunity. We'll start you off with a handful of free ones, <laughs> just like a pusher, right? You sell those, the next ones you buy from us. Sell them, make a little profit, buy even more. After a while, you'll get better territories, work your way up, etc., etc. And if you can't sell them, we don't buy them back. So you've got a plan. And you get one designated territory, poaching anyone else, and you're done. Period. Boom. Clear? Boom. Clear. It can be quite surreal to have James on set because I'll be playing a scene with fake James <laughs> with Luke and uh, I'll, I'll walk off and run into real James and it's quite bizarre because the whole production is here because of him and Bob and it's it's heartwarming and it's it just keeps us with the knowledge of why we're doing it. When I first had James round to my house about five days before we started filming I think but it was amazing to have the person you're playing and, and right there with you and in ways it's given me a sort of confidence. What are you going to do now? Well, first thing, I've got to find a way to thank you. Ah, oh, come here. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, did I hurt you? <laughs> In a good way. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> All right, come on, mister. Come on, up you come. Up you come, come on. Come on, good boy. All right. You take care of yourself. And you. We are somewhere in London. I'm <laughs> not quite sure exactly where we are. In a semi-derelict building, um, which has been Val's office. The set is where what Luke's character James would have come to meet his key worker every two weeks when he's on the methadone treatment programme. Luke's built this fantastic character. And when you meet James, Luke really has got his mannerisms and his voice, his accent, all these things really, really down to a T. You got yourself arrested and you didn't get your methadone. James, you are so close. Don't lose it now. It wasn't my fault, all right? None of this, it wasn't my fault. It's been wonderful to be able to speak to James and ask him questions about, you know, is this realistic? Is this how somebody of, you know, in my character's job would be and you know so it's been really 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 helpful and um, and the real Bob is the best trained cat we've had <laughs> he's amazing